Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about creating a customized play along track or backing track while sounding professional. So starting from scratch all the way to the downloadable mp3 file. It's pretty easy to do. I'm sure already a lot of you are already using programs like GarageBand or even recording yourself. I'll be using Logic Pro 10, which you can get a free 9 day trial to. If you're using any other program like GarageBand or BandLab, I'm sure you can still follow along to this tutorial. Also, as an educator, you can get the Apple Pro Apps Bundle for Education at just $200, which is a steal. It includes Logic, Final Cut, Compressor, Motion, and Mainstage, which is easily over $600 value. Check the links below. So let's jump into Logic and check out my workflow for creating custom play along tracks or backing tracks for your students, your colleagues, or anyone else you know. Okay, ready? Let's go. Okay, so we're in Logic Pro 10 here. To close the library, you hit Y on the keyboard close the information panel yet I. So up here, I'm gonna set the tempo. I can just double click there and then set it. I keep mine at 80 for all my beginning band kids. And then I'm gonna go now into the time signature. You can change it to wherever you like or hit a custom one. I'm gonna keep it at four, four. And then for this one, I want my kids to learn an F major scale. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the key signature to F major. Now we're gonna go ahead and make sure we use the metronomes. Click it or hit K on the keyboard. So that will let you have the metronome play as you hit the play button. I don't like the sound of the metronome, so I'm gonna pull up the mixer by hitting X on the keyboard, and I'm gonna click on all, and that will bring up the actual click track for the metronome. If you notice, it has a clup, guys, here, or a knocking ghost. If I click on that, you can actually change the sound of the metronome. So I'm gonna hit the play button, spacebar, and hit K, and you can change the sound of the metronome by moving tonality. So it has more presence into it. So I like to keep mine at 0.8, and I'll keep it right there. So now we're gonna to wanna to create a click track for the students to play along with because if you just try to bounce a file, there will be no click track. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an instrument. I'm gonna make it software. I'm gonna click on uh, open library and click, click create. Now it's gonna load up this default patcher. I really don't need this classic piano. So I'm gonna go ahead into the mixer and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hit reset channel strip. So now it's an empty track and I'm gonna go ahead and delete these extra little tracks I created for reverb and channel EQ. Like I'm gonna go ahead and go up here, tell it metronome. I'm gonna go ahead and hit I on the keyboard, click this little drop down box, go to icon, and I can actually change it to a metronome. I'm gonna hit I and Y on the keyboard. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this clop guys here and move it over to the instrument input. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna hold the option key on my keyboard and then drag it so it makes a copy into that. So now I have my metronome still available as a click track. For the actual instrument, if I pull up a MIDI keyboard by hitting Command K or if I use my actual keyboard, you can actually play this metronome as an instrument, which is a clef, guys. So there we go. There's a good sound alike. So I'm gonna use a Concert F. And I'm gonna record this now. Now, if you notice, I'm not completely at all with this metronome. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click it and you can see my region here. If I double click that region, we have my metronome. I'm completely off time. So what we're gonna do is now is we're gonna quantize this. So I'm gonna click away somewhere around here, hit Command A, highlight all of it, and then I'm gonna quantize this to the chord note. Move chord note and boom, all of it is now locked in time perfectly. I only need about one measure of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here on the region and then I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command T. That will break that apart. I'm gonna delete the rest of it because I don't need it. I'm gonna go back. Perfect. Now it's a metronome, so we just need to keep it like that. And what I can do now is on the region, on the upper right hand corner, I can drag it to whatever I need, how long I need it for. And that'll play throughout the entire track. And if I ever bounce this track as an MP3 file, that metronome will play along. So now I'm gonna show you how to add actually instruments to this and MIDI files. So we're gonna, if you just wanna do a quick little scale or play a song for your kids, you can do it this way. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign, go to software instrument, hit create. I'm gonna go ahead and use, I love to use the orchestral uh, pipe organ, wedding organ. I, I think it sounds very close to a harmony director or the, the Yamaha harmony director. So if you play it, sounds really close to that. If you want to, you can change it to other instruments using Logic's built-in library, which is huge. I can go to Studio Horns, go to Single Instruments. You can find all the different instruments here for brass. I usually like those and saxes. What's really handy is if I go to Trumpet, for example, 
go to horns, you can actually change the articulations of the instrument, vibrato, all of that, which is really handy. If you're interested in trying to find the other instruments, you can go to orchestral, go to brass or woodwinds, and you can find those or even strings. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and play my notes using the MIDI keyboard. Here's where it gets really fun. You don't have to play at speed for your exercises. So for example, I wanna play uh, all chord notes because I wanna be quickly with it, but my kids, I want them to play using whole notes. So I'm gonna play my exercises all doing chord note speed or even eighth note speed, and then I'm gonna go ahead and change this all to a tempo that they should be at. So I'm gonna go back to the very beginning and now I want to be able to make sure each single note, the attacks, this is the note length and the intensity are the same. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this window here, double click on my region, and that'll open up the piano roll. So now if I click away, hit Command A, and then now hit Q for quantize, all the attacks will now be in the right spot. I'm now gonna make these all whole notes because I want my students to practice at whole note speed. So I'm gonna go to Functions, MIDI Transform, and I'm gonna go ahead and go to half speed. I'm not gonna worry about what this says. I'm gonna hit select and operate. And now every single note is twice as long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. Hit, click away, hit command A. I'm gonna go to functions, mini transform, and hit half speed. Don't even need to look at that. Now each note is exactly four beats long. Now if you notice the ends of each note are not the same note length. So I'm gonna click away again, hit Command A, go to Functions, MIDI Transform, and go to Fixed Note Length. Now this is where you have to pay attention to this little box here. Right here on the very left-hand side, if you put a one there as a value, that'll be a whole note. So I hit one, and if you make sure you have the rest set to zero, that would change it to a whole note. Now let's say you want to change each note to a full-on chord note. You can go here and hit zero, put a one on the second column here, and then hit select, and now every single note is a full chord note. If you wanna make it twice as long, put a two there, and each note will now be a half note. Okay, so now if you wanted to, and you wanna change the intensity of each note to be exactly the same, you can go do the same process, hit Command A, select them all, Functions, MIDI Transform, and go to Fixed Velocity, and you just gotta change the value right here to change all the values of each note. Now, I don't like to change it because I like to give it a little bit more of a human touch from when I play the keyboard, but it's up to you if you wanna change that. Okay, so now you're gonna notice our region is a little bit too short now for all whole notes. So how can we fix that? Well, if you pull it open, you'll see we can add more of it, but it's gonna eat into the rest of the exercises we just played. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit C for cycle, move this over to where the measure is, and I'm gonna hit Control Command Z, and I'm gonna add in a bunch of extra space there. Now if I go to the bottom here and click on the region, you'll see a gray line that indicates the rest of the exercise I just played. You will also need to move the metronome to fill in the rest of the space as well. So I have all my exercises here lined up. Each one's quantized and each one has the right note length. So now all we need to do is add in a vocal track or an announcer track to announce what exercise is being played. So I'm gonna go to the beginning here. I'm gonna hit C on the keyboard and make sure this loop cycle is set to the very beginning. And now I'm gonna hit Command Control Z and add in quite a good amount of space. So I already have an audio track set up here. If you don't, just click the plus sign, go to audio and select your input from your audio interface. Now, if you don't have an audio interface and using the built-in mic, that's okay. Just select built-in mic or input one and then hit create. I'm gonna change the title to voiceover. I'm gonna turn off that cycle key, keep it off and I'm gonna hit record on record enable to let me record on this. So if I hit the R on my keyboard, you can now see that there's a wave being generated as I'm talking. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this and do a voiceover. Concert F exercises. Exercise A, major scale whole notes. Now if you notice, I hit the space bar to stop my recording so that way it doesn't keep going. So now I'm gonna have K selected, hit R on the record, and I have my metronome set. So now I can count along to that metronome. One, two, ready, play. So all there's left now to do is to grab that very first exercise and bring it in to the very beginning with your count off. So I'm gonna go in and zoom in now, and we're gonna want the metronome being played along with the recording. So that's all I'm gonna do is drag this metronome over 
with my voiceover. And I like to have a little bit of a count off beforehand. One, two, ready, play. Perfect. So now it's all lined up and ready to go. Just make sure the end of your metronome is going to go all the way throughout your exercise. I usually go an extra beat there so that way when the last note plays, there's one more beat for, to signify the cutoff. And the next thing I'm going to do is add an arrangement on the top here so I can find what section of music very quickly. So I'm going to go here to this little drop down icon, click there, and we have arrangement, marker, signature, and tempo. I don't need the other one, so I'm going to right click or control click and get rid of like marker, get rid of signature, and even tempo because I don't need it. So now we just have arrangement. I'm gonna click the plus sign here. If I click the drop down box here, you'll see verse, chorus, bridge, outro. I'm actually gonna rename it. Put down concert, F major, whole notes. So now I'm gonna zoom in by hitting command, right. I'm gonna go ahead and get this now and pull it. So it pulls and fills in the entire section of that recording. If you wanna change the colors and get fancy, you can click on the side of it and hit option C and that'll give you a color. So I can change this to red. And if I want to, you can even change and highlight all of your sections and regions here and also make them all red so they're all the same color. And you can find your section of music very quickly. For the next section, I can go ahead and go to this measure and hit the plus tool and it'll open up a new arrangement. So I now know during my lessons for Zoom, I can quickly go from a major scale to a relative or to any other exercise. Now all there's left to do is to bounce the track. So before I bounce it, I'm gonna go to the upper right hand corner here and drag in this little spot because otherwise you'll have dead silence towards the end. So I'm gonna click away, hit command B for bounce and that will give me the settings to export this as a AIFF file, which is a lossless audio file, the highest quality. You can also do wave as well. If you would like to do like an MP3, maybe some students internet connection is not the most stable, that would be a good option to do as well. I'm just gonna keep this though, set to AIFF and hit okay. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a jazz play along track. And I'm gonna go ahead and start from a blank template and use Apple loops. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the right hand little loop sign. I'm gonna go ahead and type in blues. And we can find some basic things here. So we have a 12 bar blues bass. And I like that one. That one's pretty good. I'm gonna keep the tempo to 120, time signature 4-4. I'm actually gonna change the key signature. And if you notice, if I change the key signature, the Apple loop changes to match that key. Green Apple loops are MIDI files, so you can actually edit them, which is really handy. And then blue is an audio file. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this bass here, put it in my track. I'm gonna hit C for cycle, so I can cycle this 12 bar blues over and over and over. Sounds good. So I'm gonna go ahead now and move down, and I'm gonna find a good piano track, let's see. That sounds pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and pull this in, put it in, Y for library. Uh, let's pick a nice good Yamaha for that. That sounds much better. Now it's all we need is a good drummer. So let's go ahead and get a drummer going. I'm gonna click the plus sign, drummer, hit create, Y for library. And you notice this gives us a little drummer thing and it gives us descriptions of each drummer. I kind of know which one's the jazz drummers already that's under songwriter. I think it's uh, Tyrell, yeah, as a jazz brush technique. And then r and I think it's Curtis, has a bit of a jazz style as well. So I'm gonna go to Tyrell, he does the brush strokes. <laughs> Sounds pretty good already. I'm gonna go and extend his track to go 12 measures. He'll do a fill towards that last part there. You can change how he sounds, his little presets here. Go to blue or green mill or far and away. Let's see what green mill sounds like. Sounds pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to more of a simple, more laid back uh, approach right here. Let's see what that sounds like. Not too bad. You can even change what instruments he's using. He's using the high, uh, sorry, the cymbals here. You can change it to be hi-hats only. good. You can even change the swing level and the fills. So that's a quick way to do the jazz one. You export it the same way and also do the audio track the same way and count again. And that's it. There's not much to it. There are other notation programs out there like Sibelius, Finale, or even NoteFly where you can create custom play along tracks. If you're using a Chromebook, I highly suggest looking into BandLab where you can do MIDI notation and editing. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you can, please consider subscribing. Thanks for your time and look forward to working with you in the next tutorial.